Welcome to Mayo Clinic's ECG segment, Making Waves, continuing medical education podcast. Join us for a lively discussion on the latest and greatest in the field of electrocardiography. We'll discuss some of the exciting and innovative work happening at Mayo Clinic and beyond with the most brilliant minds in the space and provide valuable insights that can be directly applied to your practice. Welcome to Mayo Clinic's ECG segment, Making Waves. Today, we're diving into the world of cardiac anatomy and electrophysiology through the lens of innovative teaching methods and technologies. While traditional methods of teaching often rely on textbooks and lectures, there's immense value in using three-dimensional and mixed reality technologies to enhance understanding. These advanced techniques provide real-time immersive insights into the heart structure and function. We're fortunate to have with us Dr. Claudia Kronieska with us today, who will guide us through her research and experience on this topic. Dr. Pronieska completed her PhD in biocybernetics and biomedical engineering at the AGH University of Science and Technology in Krakow. Her research journey includes prestigious internships at the Thorax Center Heart Disease Center in Erasmus MC in Rotterdam and the American Cardiovascular Research Foundation in New York. Currently, she is a researcher and deputy director at the Center for Digital Medicine and Robotics at the Jagiellonian University Medical College in Krakow. Dr. Pronieska is a pioneer in the field of mixed reality for medical education, leading several projects to integrate 3D visualization and immersive technologies into teaching cardiac anatomy and electrophysiology. Dr. Pronieska, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for the invitation. Oh, it's such a true honor and what you're doing is exciting, but let's go back and start with the basics and you can bring our audience up to speed. Can you explain, you know, why three-dimensional structures are so important for teaching electrophysiology of the heart? Thank you for this question. Three-dimensional structures are crucial in teaching electrophysiology of the heart for several key reasons. First, I would like to say that anatomical accuracy. The heart is a three-dimensional organ with the complex structures, including chambers, a valve, and a specialized conduction system. Understanding and the spatial resolution and organization of these components is essential for um, knowing how the electro electrical impulses travel through the heart. Then we are going from for electrophysiological pathways. The pathway for electrical conductions in the heart, such as a uh, sinus electron node or AV node, a bundle uh, of his and percutaneous system uh, fibers, um, are naturally in 3D. So to visualize these pathways through these uh, organs um, helps students uh, understand how electrical signals propagate and how the effects of the conduction system of different parts of the heart are working. And also we should admit a clinical point of view and correlation in this area. Many cardiac conductions and arrhythmias uh, are better uh, to understand through the 3D perspective. For example, uh, organs of cardiac and arrhythmias uh, can be related to anatomical location with specific structures, which are more accurate represented in 3D models. So to help to understand the mechanism and treatment approach, such a catheter ablation, for example, we should uh, look at the structures in the heart from spatial um, resolution capability, and then we can think about the navigation with the heart. This leads us to some kind of educational tool, advances in 3D imaging and now we can admit about immersive technology nowadays I'm working on with my group in Krakow, uh, which allows us to see 3D models in 3D perspective. Um, we as a human being, we are naturally um, people who are looking in 3D uh, in our environment. So see the structures in the 3D using the immersive technologies make uh, us more aware of uh, 3D structures. That's quite unique. And as you mentioned, our, our whole lives as we, we see it are, are 3D, you know, and to bring that into the learning environment is quite unique. 
how do you see the ECG relating to hard anatomy? And you know, why do you find this relationship fundamental to really understanding cardiac electrophysiology? Uh, when we think about electrical activity mapping of the heart, the ECG records the electrical impulses that trigger heartbeats, which are generated and propagated through specific anatomical structures. For instance, the P wave corresponds to arterial depolarization and sinus node, the QRX complex to ventricle depolarization, and then a T wave to ventricle repolarization. And according to the research we are doing um, under the project ITEAM, uh, which is interactive teaching of medical 3D cardiac anatomy supported by mixed reality, we want to visualize this uh, correlation and this connection. Let's uh, focus, for example, on arterias and um, uh, depolarization uh, of arterias. Within the sinus node, uh, in its standard, uh, close to the superior vena cava junction position, the P wave on the ECG usually appears as a smooth upright deflection in leads 1 to um, AVF, often biophasic in V1 and inverted in lead AVR. And obviously, um, deviations in the sinus node position extend and areas activation site within uh, paranormal area can significantly impact the morphology of P wave. So going to this uh, anatomical uh, differences in uh, sinus node, we can uh, see different uh, propagation of uh, P wave, and then we can easily visualize this in 3D dimension. We can immerse to this 3D object and uh, look inside of the heart and also see on the top of the anatomical structure of the heart how this propagation related to specific um, structures in the heart um, are related. Uh, a shift of um, sinus node, for example, to the left or right, um, uh, as an anatomical perspective, may also modify P wave morphology. So, um, having this in mind, we can use this information in a teaching approach and show that all anatomical structures can be modeled for specific case studies and see the um, several scenarios for education. So uh, we can prepare specific case studies based on uh, retrospective data, having uh, information about the anatomy from uh, medical imaging data, raw data like computed tomography or MRI, um, DICOM data from uh, dedicated patients. And we, on top of that, we have also information about ECG um, morphology for this patient and using the uh, advanced modeling and um, information from both um, medical uh, data, so imaging and electricity of the heart, we can simulate uh, the possibility of propagation of this uh, wave in the heart. So going to in, into the clinical settings, uh, this integration of information from specific data, ECG data, with 3D anatomical data can uh, be used uh, to assist uh, for medical doctors in planning and guiding cardiac procedures, such as ablation, providing a detailed map of cardiac structures and electrical activation patterns. You know, that's so unique. And especially, as you mentioned, there's anatomic, you know, we know what normal is, what the expected normal pattern of, you know, say sinus node conduction, but there's anatomic variants. And I really, uh, it's unique to see, and we run through these all the day where there's variants of different patterns and perhaps, you know, the conduction system uh, varies amongst individuals and we could potentially see that. And I certainly see the uh, learning uh, potentials of this. Have you ever implemented any of these innovative teaching methods or technologies to enhance the experience uh, for learners today? Yeah, um, I have several years uh, of this experience. 
um, mm, I started a few years ago mm, uh, with um, talking with uh, doctors, with physicians. What is your unmet need about uh, 3D data visualization? And the answer usually was like, how I can see 3D models, uh, 3D relationship uh, between organs on 2D screen. That was the first uh, thing that uh, brought me to immersive technologies. And I started to look uh, for possibilities on the market and how we can implement uh, this unmet needs to um, first educational approach and then to clinical. So um, we find a solution. So you can use um, a device glasses uh, for um, immersive technologies, and you can put in this 3D perspective uh, some anatomical models. But then when you are talking with a cardiologist, they want to know something more about electro, uh, electrical uh, propagation and also a mechanism of the heart. Uh, so um, on top of that, we uh, built a concept of uh, new course for our medical students. It's additional course for our students. Uh, how we can implement this medical cases um, in the way of teaching and clinical approach. So um, together with uh, our specialists from the university, we try to find the solutions between new technologies and medical approach and how to teach medical students in a, a modern way. Uh, and we usually use a problem-based learning um, approach. So we think about case study, what is uh, um, about clinical uh, information for this uh, case study. Also, what kind of uh, raw data we can gather for this case study. So imaging data, like I um, uh, was talking before, for example, MRI scans, CT scans, ECG. Um, sometimes we have echocardiography also for this patient. So some kind of a combination of um, raw data for this patient and uh, how we can build um, accurate model uh, with information about the electricity of um, of the heart for this case. And then we were preparing classroom because you need a spe specific, let's say, environment um, to, uh, to teach in immersive technology. So we have dedicated rooms uh, um, and we then gather our students and our teachers in one uh, space and we make a virtual room and everybody is connected uh, in the same virtual uh, room, let's say this way, and the, see the same object in the middle of the classroom. And people can go around this 3D model, can look into the model, immerse in this uh, 3D visualization of the uh, cardiac anatomy, and discuss, and this is, I think, the most uh, interesting part of this approach for education, that uh, this interaction between teacher and students is really uh, active, I would say. It's really um, uh, something they never had. And um, I uh, see that they are very excited about that, that they can uh, discuss the case study in this completely different um, approach with this interaction with 3D models, but also with uh, this interaction of new technologies, which is very uh, fancy and nice for a modern uh, generation, I would say. I'm just amazed and blown away by that. I really wish I was a student uh, on the wall of one of your courses or in there. I, I, I know I would benefit. Now, in your experience, have you found uh, some ways that are most effective in conveying some of the complex 3D structures and the dynamic processes that we see uh, in the heart and electrophysiology to learners? Uh, conveying complex 3D structures and dynamic of processes in cardiac anatomy and electrophysiology can be challenging for, uh, for our medical teams and uh, also teachers. 
So um, to find a um, common way to um, incorporate our solutions to everyday practice, we try to build interactive uh, 3D visualization tools with uh, some comments and annotations from our experts, uh, our doctors, uh, our cardiologists. So um, the most uh, important thing, thing is to build a platform that you can um, be able to um, rotate, to visualize structures um, at every level of your work. So you can use this um, in the classroom, but also in operating theater. So um, this is challenging, but makes uh, our cooperation really uh, working. And then they see uh, some advantages of this special re relationship in um, anatomical structures, especially for cardiac uh, disease, that they can use it um, basically wherever they want. Uh, so uh, it makes uh, me as a, um, a person who wants to deliver something which is interesting for cardiac uh, environment for physicians, um, a clear message. Make for us uh, a tool, a platform, uh, a models uh, in, in the way that they will be useful for everyday practice. Because I think this is the most challenging part of new technologies that um, mm, it has to be easy to use. And also um, idea that mm, a person who is um, bioengineer or medical physicist uh, as a background from um, and this uh, job perspective that is next to the doctors, that they can see uh, what is this unmet need uh, for everyday practice for uh, uh, clinicians. So uh, we can um, update our uh, point of views every day. So this close cooperation in interdisciplinary uh, team makes our uh, solution better every day. That, that, that would be uh, my uh, conclusion for what I'm doing, that I really appreciate this interdisciplinary um, cooperation with uh, um, clinical environment. Wow. Thank you so much. So from education to actually practical application, but as you mentioned, the interdisciplinary uh, relationships, what a, a blessing it is and just to learn from each other. Today, we explore the intersection of cardiac anatomy, electrophysiology, and innovative teaching technologies. Dr. Pronieska shared her insights on the importance of three-dimensional structures in teaching and how mixed reality can enhance the learning experience. As we wrap up today's episode, it's clear that integrating advanced visualization tools into medical education can provide profound benefits, offering immersive real-time insights into the heart's function. A sincere thank you to Dr. Pronieska for joining us and sharing her groundbreaking research and experience. Thank you so much. Thank you for your invitation. Thank you, Anton. Thank you for joining us today. We invite you to share your thoughts and suggestions about the podcast at cveducation.mayo.edu. Be sure to subscribe to a Mayo Clinic cardiovascular CME podcast on your favorite platform and tune in every other week to explore today's most pressing electrocardiography topics with your colleagues at Mayo Clinic. This has been a Mayo Clinic podcast.